Hi, my name is Justin Brown. I'm the Director of Investments at Greenspring Advisors and lead Greenspring's Investment Committee. Today, I'll be discussing updates from Q1 of 2024. Let's start with asset class returns. The U.S. stock market continued its strong performance, recording double-digit returns for the second consecutive quarter. International developed and emerging markets also saw positive returns, while real estate returns experienced a slight dip. In the bond market, U.S. bond returns decreased slightly due to rising interest rates, as the market adjusted its expectations for when the Fed might begin cutting interest rates. However, global bonds delivered positive returns, underscoring the importance of maintaining a well-diversified bond exposure that spans both the U.S. and international markets. Looking at longer-term returns, we see positive performance across all asset classes over the one, five, and 10-year periods. Particularly noteworthy are the five-year returns, where we see positive returns despite the challenging market environment we experienced that included both the coronavirus sell-off in 2020 and then the market drawdown in 2022. This highlights the market's ability to weather these difficult times and the importance of remaining invested and staying the course during turbulent times. Shifting gears a bit, if you follow the market on the news, you've probably heard of a group of stocks that have been deemed the Magnificent Seven. These stocks include Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Throughout history, there always seems to be a new group of stocks getting a fancy name after performing well. When hearing headlines around stocks like this, a common question that arises is, why not just buy these select stocks? Here at Greenspring, we believe in utilizing pooled investment vehicles like mutual funds or ETFs, where you can still get exposure to these popular stocks, but at the same time are much more diversified and face less risk. This chart right here takes a look at the Magnificent Seven and shows where their 2023 returns ranked within the S&P 500 index. With the hype around these stocks, you would think that they must have been at the top of the index. While they all performed well, this shows that there were many other stocks that did well, and in many cases, even better. As you know, the success of your portfolio is not determined based off one year's performance. If we look at these same stocks, how did they rank in 2022? just one year prior to being deemed the Magnificent Seven. They all performed poorly and ranked near the bottom 25% of all the stocks in the S&P 500, or worse. Looking at this year, some of these stocks have already seen a drawdown in performance, leading the Magnificent Seven to now be renamed the Fabulous Four. All this is to say that while these stocks have all had certain periods of outperformance, it's important to diversify your exposure and not put all of your eggs in one basket. Trying to time not only when a stock's big run will start is incredibly difficult, but it's equally as difficult to determine when that run will end. Another way to help show this is using this chart. When looking at a single stock, despite how strong its performance has been, that is no guarantee that its future performance will have a similar story. This chart looks at nearly 100 years of data and how companies performed before and after the first year they became one of the top 10 by size in the US. The three bars on the left show that companies that entered the top 10 have historically outperformed the market by a significant margin. However, after joining the top 10, on average, the returns that follow tell a different story. On average, these same stocks perform in line with the market for three years after entering the top 10 and underperform the market on average five years and 10 years after. This shows that as companies grow into some of the largest stocks, the returns that push them there can be impressive. But not long after joining the top 10, the performance of these stocks looks a little different, and they have historically begun to trail the market. While the Magnificent Seven all recently found themselves inside the top 10 due to strong performance, it's important to remember that a firm's future prospects are already reflected in their current stock price. Positive news could push future prices higher, but those changes are not predictable and certainly are not a guarantee based on the historical data. Lastly, this chart here is one of my favorites as it really helps to show how diversification of a mutual fund or ETF can help reduce risk in your portfolio and reiterates why we are firm believers in investing through mutual funds and ETFs and not individual stocks. 2023 was a very strong year for the market with the US stock market up nearly 26%. Given that, you would think most of the stocks in the US would have had positive returns. This chart on the left shows a much different picture. Despite the market being up nearly 26%, 43% of the stocks in the US actually lost money for the year. And if you were to look at every single mutual fund and ETF in the US for that same period, only 1% lost money. So again, 
While you certainly can make a lot if you pick the correct stock to do well, this helps to show that even in an up year, finding those individual stocks can be very challenging, and there's a high risk you could still lose money by making the wrong decision. On the other hand, the diversification provided by a mutual fund or ETF results in much lower levels of risk and less likelihood of suffering losses. On behalf of the Investment Committee at Greenspring Advisors, I want to thank you for your time today. As always, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions.